Was that it? Is it over now? Is the crypto Bitcoin correction over? Is it up only now from now on and forever as the halving is only nine days away um, as of this moment? Well, that is the topic of today as we do assess the overall picture in the more medium term time frame range. And then, of course, uh, going to be going over some daily six as well. Anyways, other than that, we can just jump right into this one. We'll even go over maybe Ethereum at the end as well. And in this case, we do see that the daily time frame on Bitcoin, as far as all Thursdays go, as always, is the least likely day to close positively, actually. If you look at these physics right here, 39.5% of all Thursdays measured from today to January 1st of 2023 have closed um, positively, which is the lowest rate out of any day um, by a pretty good margin, I'd say, as well. But more importantly here, uh, Thursday actually has the highest negative return as well as negative spot, uh, sorry, one spot seven, eight percent on those losing days. In the days that it has closed positively, because, you know, about four out of 10 days, it will close positively or four out of 10 times it'll close positively, more accurately said. That would be about one spot nine percent or almost two uh two percent now in this case i probably actually would take the other side of this one but let's just kind of look at the um range that as that would imply to the downside that would show somewhere around sixty nine thousand four hundred to the upside that would show um about seventy two thousand bucks or a little bit of a little bit under seventy two thousand bucks um in this case as long as bitcoin is above yesterday's low which is sixty seven thousand five hundred short-term upside more likely but as you've been saying upside within the context of this overall range is still a range you know i don't think that there's any like massive girthy green dildo party about to begin at this exact moment um if it is going to begin it probably begins tomorrow if i had to guess as uh thursday you know probably gonna be playing within the overall range to be fair um, but if you do see bitcoin now come back down below and especially close below wednesday's low again sixty-seven thousand five hundred, that would be indicative that we will see an overall move to the bottom side of the six thousand dollar range before this is all said and done as it stands right now the the probabilities and momentum it's actually shifting once again in favor of the blue laws as we did say but the sort of timing of this it's actually happening a little bit faster than probably what i would have expected just because the having is still about nine days away so you know you kind of expect some more just uh sideways you know boring bullshit going on right here but in this case um it does look like things kind of setting up maybe not necessarily for today but uh probably the next week to come Anyways, um, going on from there, I should get into the next chart, which is the two-day time frame chart on CME. Hidden bullish divergence is going to have a chance to confirm at the end of today if it closes anywhere here or higher, currently trading above 71,200. Um, if that does get confirmed, I very likely would be looking for a retest of current all-time highs for Bitcoin, um, maybe even new highs, to be fair as well. Uh, probably by latest early next week, um, which again would be before the halving. So, you know, things are maybe potentially moving a little bit faster here than what we did first consider. Last time we saw a two day time frame, uh, hidden bullish divergence was back on over here in the lows of ja uh, yeah, January 23. Um, that's January 23rd of the year 2024, not January uh, 2023. And uh, in November 13th of the prior year, which was this low. <laughs> and this low producing this past move. Now I don't necessarily uh, imply that there's gonna be a move of the same, you know, of the same uh, percent, uh, but you know, should be good enough to get Bitcoin probably into the deeper 70s, maybe even low 80s, um, you know, with all of that in mind. So, you know, things are, are, are starting to tick here, but it's a long day left to go, 14 hours, 26 minutes and 44 seconds. And as of right now, you know, that is possible. Um, if Bitcoin does close below, let's say, what would it be? About 70,000 bucks, it will not be confirmed. And at that point, you know, still probably just more sideways with still that potential move to the downside um, in the mid to low 60s. But again, as you've been saying on this channel, you know, this, these are most likely opportunities here. Most likely opportunities based off of the long-term uh, Bitcoin production fundamentals chart. Anything around 60,000 bucks is uh, is likely an opportunity, especially as the halving draws near and near. There might be, you know, another, again, another quick wake down around there, but I would view that personally as a long-term opportunity um, uh, for this asset. Anyways, moving on from there, um, we should get we should get into stochastic momentum. We pointed this one out yesterday as well, that it will have a chance to flip back onto the upside with a closure above, I believe it was $67,000. Bitcoin certainly closed above that last night. And the current pivot is now 69,500, as you can see. So as long as Bitcoin's basically here, um, which is almost $2,000 away on CME, 
you know, stochastic momentum remains to the upside and the two day time frame will also potentially turn to the upside as well. Has a little bit more work to do to be fair uh, if it wants to do it on this particular closure, but 71,850 currently trading about 600 bucks below that pivot. And then the five day time frame, which is, I think this one actually might be closing tonight as well. Yeah, it is for CME at least. Uh, 70,900 is current pivot again, well within the critical zone. So, you know, how long can it stay up there? Maybe another couple of periods, yeah, which would imply continuation as well. Um, and right now, trading about 300 bucks above that pivot. So, you know, basically, I would say the lowest time frame that is relevant here is the two day time frame. You see the hidden bullish evidence get confirmed. You're probably going to see the next domino of effects lead on to those other time frames. And then we probably do see, you know, retest of those highs, maybe new highs. Um, uh, before the halving. Now, for all the pattern bros out there, which I don't really consider myself one, but um, if I had to pick one pattern, it'd probably be the ascending and descending triangles. And in this case, we do see that Bitcoin actually is starting to make itself a nice little triangle here, a nice little triangle of consolidation. And you know, why do triangles as patterns work anyways? Because it's trend, it's just fucking trend. You know, an ascending triangle is an uptrend. You see higher lows, you see the same highs. Okay, what's going to be the most likely thing to happen is continuation of that trend. Higher lows implies that buyers are just getting more well confident, getting more aggressive. Whatever the fuck doesn't matter. Upside more likely. Same thing for descending tri triangles, but on the opposite side, lower highs. Well likely lead towards more aggressive selling. In this case, there is an implied move to be made from this. Um, if Bitcoin does essentially break and close above the current highs, um, which would imply a target towards 85 to 86,000 bucks, which is also in alignment with one of our other models, which I actually did not bring up today. Didn't want to harp on it too much, to be honest, but uh, you know, that would probably be the next sort of um, area of interest Maybe not necessarily on this move, but perhaps over the next uh, couple months here. I always say a couple months and then maybe it's like a couple weeks. Who knows? Um, timing of these things is very, very difficult. Anyways, uh, moving on here into one of our last charts, we will look at the Bitcoin HPD or bands. As always, breaking things down into statistical ranges is, in my opinion, the best way to be looking at things. And, uh, and what can we see right here? Okay, we do see the potential, the markings of what you would expect actually on a potential breakout. Why do I say that? Because we see that HPDRV is expanding from extreme lows while HPDRO representing directional volatility is above the, it's in positive territory and the moving average is about to, well, close above there as well. So in this case, you know, does Bitcoin retest around 73,000 bucks? Perhaps yes. Um, doesn't necessarily imply a breakout right there, but with the way that these offsets are current posi currently positioned, this is kind of what you would expect leading up into a potential breakout. Um, in this case, as far as the Cisco ranges go, the 61.8 level here, which is kind of where I start to identify things as trending movements are very, very likely to trend, is 73,000 bucks actually. So if Bitcoin does start uh, does come up there and close up there today, I would look at that as a strong indication that we are gonna see Bitcoin uh, actually fulfill the breakout, actually fall through with the breakout, and trade up north towards 77,000 uh, bucks, maybe even low 80s at that point in a relatively short manner. You know, this is a daily, so that can still take time, obviously. Uh, by the same token, if Bitcoin does come back down below yesterday's low, I would be very open to at least a move towards $65,000. I do think that there would be a short-term bounce there. That bounce very likely would fail and we would see actually a, a full-on move um, down to the very low 60s. But like it's been saying before, I think that that would be an opportunity. Um, I think a lot of this will likely get decided today. The easiest way to be looking at this is just if that hidden bullish evidence on the two-day time frame does get confirmed. If that gets confirmed, that's gonna lead very, very likely into the domino effects on the other time frames. And what do you know? You know, Probably do see that move into the deeper 70s uh, start to emerge. So you know, I do wanna take a second here Actually, let's, 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 let's very quickly go over Ethereum and then I'll give my thoughts kind of on this, um, on kind of like the, the, the strength of the cycle. But Ethereum also showing, uh, I, would, can, I, would, I would say, some strength here. Uh, again, hidden bullish evidence on this low versus this low and very likely does work its way back up. I mean, relative to Bitcoin, it's still, you know, overall weak. But, you know, we expect these things, the majors, to kind of be working hand in hand with each other. And as far as Ethereum goes, you know, I do think that it's probably getting ready for another move. Um, back up closer towards 4,000 bucks, as we said earlier this week, didn't necessarily confirm the conditions that we wanted to see uh, earlier this week to make that a reality, but um, it's gonna have another chance today. And if you do start to see moves and closures on a two day time frame above uh, 3,600 and let's just call it three, let's just call it 3,700 round up there. Um, I would say that that's extremely, extremely likely that we will see another uh, reach us to the current highs and probably push to new highs um, on this year for Ethereum as well. Anyways, okay, so I wanna take a second here to talk about Bitcoin and just sort of the, like the, 
uh, assuming that these things do get confirmed today um, as on the bullish side that is um, understanding that technically speaking the statistics over here are kind of against that with Thursdays but I do think that this would be a, a good Thursday for that to kind of maybe not play in alignment with that again 39 and a half percent you know does mean like four out of ten Thursdays will close positively just by the nature of statistics but um, you know if Bitcoin does continue on from here even making more new highs before the halving. Personally speaking, I do think that this current cycle is actually going to be a lot, a lot um, uh, shorter than past cycles. I don't think Bitcoin's going to get up as far as what most people think, and um, and I do think that uh, I think there's going to be kind of a surprising, like parabolic, parabolic blow off top, a lot sooner, maybe even in the summer maybe even in the summer. Um, that's just my personal thoughts as of right now. And that can obviously change as time goes on and naturally will change as time goes on and new information comes in. But, you know, just looking at the way that things are as of this moment, uh, one of the big things for me, among many other things to be fair as well, is the monthly stochastic oscillator, which, you know, will actually cross to the downside after the, at the end of this month, the Bitcoin closed below 72,250. But basically anytime that we've seen it start to, you know, really cross to the downside, it deep in the critical zone like this, the long-term rally is mostly done, especially from like this level, by the way. Um, in fact, this was the same level that the last two uh, highs were called in around. So we got this one right here. We got this one right here. This one over here obviously uh, was not anywhere near that and did top out a lot later on a lot, lot you know, on a significant divergence right there. Um, but, uh, but ultimately, you know, from a timing perspective, from a timing perspective, um, once that starts to cross down within this region, you know, the highs were put in, in this case, how long after that? Uh, okay, seven bars, so that would be seven months, okay? So about half a year after that one. This one technically probably about the same. Yeah, seven bars again. This one over here, obviously just uh, one bar. Um, but I'd say, you know, at that point, you got maybe like half a year to go. I guess that would kind of push things out, you know, on the upper end. Um, I guess that kind of would push things out maybe close towards the end of this year. But, you know, people are looking towards 2025 and 2026. I think that's probably going to be misguided. I actually do think that that's going to be misguided. I think that it's very likely we see the high for the cycle in maybe late 2024 or maybe very early 2025. Um, so, yeah, it's just my opinion as of right now. Again, subject to change as new information does come in. But uh, just something that I did want to get out there. You know, as this rally is intensifying, actually, as of right now, and, you know, really hasn't had a, um, you know, a major consolidation on a higher term time frame like the monthly since about a year ago. Yeah, about a year ago in March, April, May in this pocket right here. So that's a good place for me to be um, shutting off on this particular video. Uh, as always, I want to wish you the best, best. Take care, much love, and fuck you and see you tomorrow.